So last night on The Story, we brought you the exclusive story of Matthew Schreier, an American held hostage by an al-Qaeda affiliate for more than seven months before he made an incredible escape. He came home to little fanfare. In fact, he alleges that the treatment he got from his own government was dreadful, suggesting that the FBI not only lied to his family, but essentially used him as a pawn in a sick terrorist game of chess. You're saying the FBI sacrificed your safety in order to track al-Qaeda? Yes. Former intelligence officials told Fox Schreier's theory is more than plausible. That's a big allegation to make. I can prove it. Now he's ready to tell his story in the new book, The Dawn Prayer, and is using what he learned to help our men and women in uniform. Matthew Schreier, welcome. Good to see you uh, tonight. You know, there's so Thank many you. different angles to this story. Um, but first of all, can you just explain to everybody how you got out? You know, you're, you're locked in a cell with walls as high as you can see with another guy, another American, and your first thought is, I'm going to get out of here. I saw that the window was flawed. Once upon a time, somebody clipped the wires. They're very thick wires cemented into the foundation of the building. Somebody clipped them, and then they welded them on, but they didn't do a good job. So I tried pulling them off. I tried prying them off. It didn't work. So I studied them, and I realized that they were welded on on one side and held together by tension. So if I unweaved the verticals, I can bend back the horizontals on the side where they weren't welded and create the opening. How did you stay okay? You know, I said to you before we sat down, you know, you look at, you were, you were tortured, right? Right. You were beaten. Right. You were dragged. No. Mistreated. Yeah. <laughs> How, and you say, as, you know, a few days after you got back, you, you bounced back. Yeah. I mean, you got to stay as positive as possible. I know it sounds crazy, but I tried to keep my sense of humor. I tried to keep my mind clear. And as a Jewish guy in an Al-Qaeda prison, the way I thought of things are, you know, the only thing worse than, the only thing almost as bad as getting your head cut off is sitting around waiting for it to happen, so I didn't do that. I just used the time to my advantage by trying to figure a way out of there and other exercises. It worked. Uh, I, I want to talk to you about the FBI. How, how do you believe that they wronged you? I know that they wronged me. At first, I thought it was incompetence, but after I started really investigating everything and looking at the financial records, and the documentation uh, between my mother and the agent, Lindsay Perotti, who was on the case. So your parents were trying to get you back? Well, actually, my mother was. The FBI never told my father that I was kidnapped, and they convinced my mother I was okay so that she wouldn't tell him because my father would have probably de demanded answers a lot more, so it was easier for them to not have him involved. So once I started really investigating everything, I realized that she was lying about a lot of things. Like in an email after I came home, I said, you know, they drained my bank accounts, you told me that you froze them with $8,000 left. And she says, yeah, I did freeze them in an email, and uh, they must have called up with your security questions. Meanwhile, Citibank sends me an email saying, they never froze your bank accounts. We froze them because of an overdraft in your personal savings, and then they moved on to your business account. Because they were using your computer to keep tracking these guys. No, 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 they were using my money. They took all my financial information, and they were hacking into my accounts and buying computers with that money. And the FBI was monitoring all of my finances. We know this beyond a reasonable doubt, that they were monitoring my finances before they ever spoke to my mother. And this is because the agent told me she thought I joined al-Qaeda because they paid off my Discover card. That's what it takes to fool the FBI. So because they thought I joined, and I was basically judged guilty until proven innocent, they started monitoring everything, and they saw they were buying laptops 10 at once, tablets on eBay. And you got to think. This is a dream come true. We intercept the laptops, we get the IP addresses, maybe put some GPSs, some microphones in, and we deliver them right into the hands of Al-Qaeda. And they spy. And me, well, I'm not coming home anyway, so no harm, no foul, as so long as you're not me. You, essentially, as, as Catherine uh, said in, in right. the piece that we just saw. This is a statement from the FBI uh, that they put out today. Um, they knew that we were going to be speaking with you, and they sent it here. Uh, it says the FBI fully supports the work of agents and victim specialists who have remained consummate professionals in working with Mr. Schreier. It goes on to say, since his return home, we have worked with our partners in the U.S. government to provide Mr. Schreier with a full range of services and guidance to help him rebuild his life. We do this for all victims, however, and it, it is uh, at the discretion of the victim to accept and implement these resources. So they're suggesting that they've offered you help and to work with you and that you haven't 
taking it? They gave me health benefits that were the same things given to illegal aliens. And when I went to this doctor, he refused to prescribe me something to help me sleep because he said it was narcotic and he doesn't believe in it. FDA approved drug. Uh, that's why I stopped seeing him. They gave me a shrink who canceled five appointments my first two months home. Within 10 minutes of my first appointment, she tried to put me on lithium. They won't give me a new social security number, even though Al-Qaeda stole my identity. They have my social security number. They can do whatever they want with it. The United States government denies you a social security number. Right. They, uh, Agent Perotti would be like, I can't help you with that. I can't do it. What is the witness protection program for? Only the criminals? And you believe that you gave them a wealth of information I gave them, that they could use? I gave them a ton of information. I gave them two Skype names. One of them had 287 contacts on it. That's 287 terrorists yeah. and all of their contacts and all of their contacts. I memorized serial numbers on brand new windows in the cells so that they can hack into the company's account, figure out who paid for them and is funding them, where they were delivered, who they were delivered to. I kept track of the dates, every date, every significant event that happened when I met bin Laden's uh, commander, the top guy, Abu Khalid al-Suri, I know what day it was. I gave them everything. They didn't even know that the rebel groups were fighting each other. For months it was going on, and they were like, they're fighting? And I'm like, yeah, right outside my window, <laughs> right outside the car when, when we were being transferred. I mean, they thought it was like one big happy family out there, and they were shocked when they heard the truth. And now, <clears throat> excuse me, it's protocol. It's like everyone knows that ISIS fights so Al-Qaeda. using the information that you gave them. Absolutely. Um, Matt, thank you. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating story, and it's called the dawn prayer because that was the time of day that you determined after they went to prayer in the morning that they would take a nap. That was your window, and right. it was literally your window right. uh, <laughs> to get out and to, to run for your life and to be released. It's an amazing story, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. More. Good to see you tonight. Thanks.